guys. So today I want to finally release my ESP32 software to Flash, the CC8051 um, core family from Texas Instruments. And I made a small PCB for it. So it's quite simple to connect to the default or standard 10 pin 1.27 millimeter connector which is used in, for example, these small USB dongles from Texas Instruments, which are available for um, Bluetooth and also for Zigbee. The code I will show now, or the project, works with the CC2510 and CC1110 plus the CC2430 uh, microcontroller. This is the Zigbee, the 2.4 GHz version and the ZUP 1 GHz version. It is mainly not developed for this one here, which is the CC2531. It's the Bluetooth um, low energy chip. So it basically works with it, with it on hardware level, so you can talk to the chip, but it has some different commands which I did not implement by now, as my personal goal uh, is to reflash microcontrollers used in the e-paper price tag um, yeah, alignment, like this 2.9 inch version which uses uh, CC1110 internally. You have here an open one and here you can see more or less the microcontroller in it and yeah on this one you can see there is no 10 pin header so it is needed to directly solder onto the test points but on this other one here which is out of the 4.4 inch version we do have the uh, PCB pads for the 10 pin header and it can directly be connected onto this small PCB to yeah, reflash it and in the case of this e-paper display you can even put it back together in its case and connect the adapter PCB onto it and have it like a flat package, plug USB into it and use the e-paper display plus the yeah, connected ESP32 as an access point. Normally you would use such a CC debugger which comes directly from Texas Instruments but costs around 10 euros and if you just want to reflash some CC microcontroller to act as an access point or just to have a different firmware on it if you use the Zigbee stack or another Zigbee stack um, you would normally buy this one but with the ESP32 code you now can uh, very simply yeah, just use the ESP32 which most likely most of you will have already laying around and I will show you a bit how to get started and how to work with the web interface as this is working by creating a web server on the ESP32 where you can upload your bin files to to flash the microcontroller, the CC microcontroller and also to dump the firmware out of the microcontroller. So you have everything you need in this small package. And if you use the 10 pin header, you can even use the UART connection, which is also on the yeah, spare pins. And yeah, let's take a closer look into the schematics, which are very simple for this one, and then into the software as well. By the way, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. I'm quite a happy customer from them and use their PCB service for every of my small projects and even for such a simple one where we just need to connect some yeah, wires more or less 
to a connector. So like on this PCB we don't even have any components but it still looks very nice to have it this way and not solder some botch wires onto it. So yeah, try out their service out and yeah, make yourself an image of their quality. Here you can see the bare minimum connections needed to reflash such a CC microcontroller like the CC1110 or CC2430. Here we got the default or standard 10 pin CC debugger pin header where you got just ground on pin 1 and VCC 3.3 volt on pin 2 and also VCC on pin 9. So you need to connect these two wires together as this is like a VREF pin. Otherwise it could happen that on some PCBs the uh, microcontroller is not in the right mode. The other pins are just four wires now, which is for once the yeah, data pin, the DD, with the debug data, which is connected in my case to the pin 23 of the ESP32. You also have the DC pin, which is the data clock pin on pin 3, which is pin 19 in my ESP32 project. Then you also have the clock pin which is not needed okay uh, we can scrap that we don't even need that pin so forget about the clock one let's just erase it that way and that way so it's even more simple these are just relics from this PCB as I try to use every pin possible to have all possibilities later so in this PCB, you can also find it in the description to download. You have all pins connected and there's also the schematics. So you just need the debug data and debug clock pin and also the reset pin, which is connected to pin 33 in the ESP32 software. This is needed to reboot the CC microcontroller to get it into the debug mode itself to accept any debug commands. And in general, this is it. So you just need three data wires and two power wires to yeah, be able to reflash such a CC microcontroller. And now to the more interesting part, the software part. I will connect one ESP32 up to USB and also to a CC microcontroller and show you how to read or write any binary data or erase the CC microcontroller and so on. Let's now start to get everything that is needed to yeah, flash an ESP32 with the ESP CC flasher software. First of all, you can download the zip file from the GitHub repository. You can find it in the description, the link to it. This is, yeah, then every source code that is needed. And I am now using Visual Studio Code. You need to get it as well, or you could port it to Arduino, but it's simpler to just use the Visual Studio Code by now. So, yeah. For once download Visual Studio Code and also Platform I.O. is needed. After you have that downloaded and installed, you will be greeted kind of like this. And yeah, it will yeah, open the Platform I.O. normally. And you could either here open a project, select the correct one, or just go here and open a folder itself. So here you can now see I have downloaded it and I'm in the folder of the ESPCC flasher and yeah, can add it to the project. You will now then be greeted by this yeah, general page. Here you need to do a few settings. For once you need to select the correct COM port you are using. And if you are on Windows, I can really suggest on using the yeah, serial port notifier 
it's quite handy to directly see which COM port you have connected your ESP to. This is in general a good yeah, thing. This is one thing you need to set. Sometimes it's also needed to decrease the UART speed for some boards. Then you may want to use 115200. Uh, another thing is that you can set your Wi Fi credentials in source code or you can leave it like it is on default via yeah, a managed the Wi Fi manager um, library is used then where the ESP will open an own Wi-Fi where you can log into and log into the correct Wi-Fi. Or if you here just remove these two uh, slashes and yeah, put your Wi-Fi credentials in here, you can then, after selecting the correct project, which is selected in this case, click here in the bottom on Upload which will then compile the source code and will may also get the needed rest of files for the Arduino environment because everything here is built up on the Arduino environment and yeah it will then upload it to the ESP32. You can also open a serial monitor here on the bottom where you will just see some general status information um, what IP address the device got and so on and also you can see here that you can if you want to redefine the um, CC pins the three I showed earlier you can use any GPIO pin that is usable you have to be careful on the ESP as some pins need to be in a defined state on boot otherwise it will not boot or boot into bootloader mode or something like that and there is a good list if you search for it on the internet. Um, just to go a bit through the code, in general we have a few helper functions in the main loop or in the main CPP which are needed to um, separate the web server thread from the uh, main core. So on thread 1 in the ESP32 the web server is running and everything that is called from there is also running on that CPU core. So by a few helper functions we move it to core number zero which is yeah, quite free in this firmware. As you can see here the loop is just checking if it should read or um, if it should write or read the firmware of the CEC. Before that, we can see here that the serial port is initialized on yeah, that port rate. It will print a few messages. It will initialize the SPIF memory, which is used for the bin files in this case. It will initialize the web server. And it will also uh, initialize callbacks for the yeah, CC library I wrote as well. So this CC library is the main or the yeah, the core system to uh, for everything to work in this firmware. You can see here the basic color functions and also this library can be used in any other Arduino board or microcontroller. And yeah, I will not go into too much details, but yeah, it's yeah, the basic CC debugger communication being done here. Like yeah writing or receiving a byte or um, entering the debug modals and yeah in the web um, cpp file we can see here the initialize uh, web function here where it will for once handle the uh, wi-fi so it will yeah, connect to the wi-fi via the wi-fi manager or via the static connection or credentials it will then try to connect to it as well and also it will enable the DNS uh, responder which enables us then again to just call this URL to open the correct IP address so there's no yeah hassle with finding out the correct IP address 
After that, it will register some uh, HTTP requests to the equivalent functions we saw here at the top. So, for example, oh, that's not so important for this one, like chip arrays is handled here and flashing, uh, defining the file and so on. Um, yeah, so this is for the source code part. If we now open up the um, flasher itself, which you can do as well like this, on first uh, connections you will be greeted by a different looking um, page which I uh, will simulate if we would remove this um, file from the web server and go back to this page at reload we can see that we are greeted by this error message that we yeah, need to log into edit which is the back end of the web server kind of and there we can we want to select the index.htm file from the repository folder which is inside the data folder so there we can select it and by any chance upload it like this this is just for the first time or if any update to the index.htm file is done after that we can yeah, even edit it on the fly on the ESP32 and save the file and so on if we then go back to the cc.local and refresh we will be greeted with this yeah, nice overview function well, nice overview of everything that's yeah, possible. So for once we have here a few infos uh, not filled out yet a URL to the uh, repository. We can now click for example on detect CC and as I have now the PCB connected with um, ESP32 we receive here that the connected chip is the CC2510 and it is currently unlocked, which is true. Also we have here uh, quite a good status page. Uh, we can now do some functions like reading or writing the memory or erasing the chip. Like yeah, with clicking on it we can see it yeah, has erased the chip. Or we can even lock the chip where one E is in hex the yeah, locking of the debug interface and if I do it now it will lock the microcontroller and by any chance if we reset it again we should see it ah no I need to click it another time if we now redetect it you can see here that the CC is locked would now not be able to read out any yeah, flash content from it. But the more important part, for once we can erase the microcontroller again, so, which will also unlock it, and then upload a new file to the um, cc.local slash edit. And I did upload here one already, one bin file like so and then we can flash it and we will yeah, see that it is quite fast because the file size is only one kilobyte so yeah that worked already if we look here we can also see that we have a quite big file which is the cc dump and you can also see that this is an already dumped file the next function is also to dump the flash of the CC, which you can see here, you can define a file name and how much you want to dump. In my case, the CC is 32 kilobytes, so I will dump it completely. And clicking on it will start the dump. And you can also see the progress bar on how far it is. And after the dump is complete, 
it will save it to the internal flash of the ESP32 and it will also show a link to it in the yeah, log messages. So if I would click here now we can download it but we will not do so yet. So basically this is already it. We can also send some uh, custom commands which are not needed for the general functions as this is um, more, more for debugging the yeah, um, CC commands itself. And what I will now also show is, as you can see here, the CC2510 is connected, like here on this PCB. I will connect it to a different CC microcontroller, like here. Like so, it does reboot the ESP while doing so because it's drawing so much current at that moment. But the website yeah, will detect it. And if I now re-click on detect CC, you can see here that the CC2531 was detected, which is correct and connected. This is the BLE microcontroller, which is only supported as far as this so you can read out the chip number but you cannot flash or erase or yeah dump the firmware of it. It is maybe added later but for me I'm concentrating on the e uh, on the e-paper price text which are yeah working with the ESP32 very well. So that's it already for the ESP32 Texas Instruments CC Flasher software and a bit of hardware. Uh, I hope you can use it in some point of the future. I know it's not really a topic you would use every day, but every now and then I know some would search for flashing this CC microcontroller and hopefully don't need to buy the CC debugger itself. And for me, I'm using it to flash this e-paper price tag. So I just need to connect the uh, ESP PCB to it. Can do everything via USB. Only needed to open the display up once. Uh, solder the 10 pin header onto it to from then on do everything for once via the CC port and also the UART port connected to it. So for this project the CC flasher is just perfect. No brick danger of the CC inside where you are some UART bootloader also. And yeah, wish you a great day. See you next time.